Hey everybody, I wanted to do a quick video on what's called autism palilalia. I believe I'm saying that term correctly. Um, this video kind of came about, I actually had um, one of our, I think, subscribers commenting in, this, in the comment section about palilalia. She saw her son, Alistair, um, repeating phrases, and she's like, you guys call it echolalia, it's actually palilalia. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. I, I thought at first she was kind of splitting hairs, but I did more research on it. Um, realize it is a legit term. Usually it's associated with Tourette syndrome. So I was like, I'll look a little bit more into this and sure enough, it can be associated with autism. Now, is repeating phrases always palilalia? Well, not necessarily. Sometimes it can be echolalia. Generally, it's something like this where you'll ask someone with autism a question like, do you like um, yellow or blue? And they'll say blue. And then you say, do you like blue or yellow? And then they'll say yellow. So obviously it can't be both. They're not thinking critically. What they're doing is they're just repeating the last word you said. Um, sometimes it can be scripting where people will repeat a phrase in a movie or a song they've heard. Um, sometimes that's associated closely with echolalia or delayed echolalia. Um, so there's different terms, they apply to different things, but a lot of times there's overlap. One of the best um, descriptions of this I saw was on um, Amethyst's channel. I think it's called Ask an Autistic. Anyway, she has autism and um, she has a really good insightful information as someone with autism, uh, much better than someone like me who's neurotypical, even though I do have experience being a caretaker for autistic kids, which incidentally, as a side note, it's interesting sometimes professionals will ask us what our experiences are, even though they're the professionals, um, because they just want to know. They don't, they watch kids sometimes, they interact with them, they do diagnosis, but they, they're not always there for like when kids go to bed or take showers or get their haircuts. So we can provide a lot of insight for them. Um, on that same token, we need to be responsible in, in terms of sharing proper education, um, especially for an autism channel. Um, and we don't wanna mislead you guys or anything like that. Sometimes we learn new things. Um, autism research is always ongoing. This video will become dated and we'll learn new things, but in terms of palilalia, echolalia, scripting, and verbal stimming, that's another one where um, oftentimes it's just noises or sounds that autistic people will make coming and clicking and things like that. So all kind of closely related. It's a bit like saying um, which, which thing caused the sneeze. And it's like, well, it could have been pepper. It could have been hay fever. It could have been an allergy or a cold. Sometimes it's hard to trace which one is which. And so in the case of our son, we use the example, um, he kept saying seven over and over again because he had heard seven, he'd heard us say it when we were counting, he heard it on the TV from an educational program. And then later as like delayed echolalia, he said seven again and again, but then he kept saying it, palilalia. So yeah, it gets a little confusing sometimes, but still we want to, to be as accurate as possible. Not always gonna be 100%. But anytime we learn new information, we want to share that information to you guys. That's what this video is about, is um, not just updating, but kind of keeping in mind that research is ongoing with autism. These kids don't come with a terminology manual. If you listen real closely, you can hear Ian. He's... <laughs> yeah, he's, he's doing the, the verbal stimming. You can hear him making sounds just outside my, my bedroom door. <laughs> So yeah, we asked our speech pathologist about this. She even has a PhD and it might shock some of you. She had never heard of the term palilalia. And you can't really fault her too much for that because again, it's an ongoing learning experience when it comes to autism. We're always learning new things, new terms are being invented and on and on we go. So um, as we learn new things, we'll impart that knowledge to you guys. And we appreciate you guys watching this video. And we also got a call um, about Alistair's diagnosis. We'll be sharing that soon. It, it wasn't quite what we expected, um, but I don't want to give anything away yet. So stay tuned and we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.